The third ground and the just causes would be gross and habitual neglect of duty. So let's look at the terms now. What do you mean by gross? What do you mean by habitual? Let's look at the case of Matis versus Meralco. According to that case, the Supreme Court's the Supreme Court's ruling is this: no? gross negligence it connotes want of care in the performance of one's duties, while habitual neglect it implies repeated failure to perform one's duties for a period of time, depending on the circumstances. Now, if you look at this paragraph. <laughs> You have to remember that these two elements must be present. The act must be considered gross negligence at the same time it is habitually committed. Because the absence of one will not be a ground for termination. And it is the burden of proof of the employer to prove that the employee the act of the employee is constitutive of gross negligence and habitual neglect of duty. As law student, you are familiar of uh, negligence as a term. No? So we even know what are the degree of diligence required. So if you don't comply with those diligence required, then you are presumed negligent by law. So in this case, the employer must prove that the employee has been grossly negligent of his duties and has committed habitual neglect. That's why the case of abandonment is very popular in the Supreme Court decisions. Employees went old and then the employer terminated the employees based on abandonment. However, the Supreme Court imposed the requirements in order for the employer to validly terminate an employee under gross and habitual neglect of duty by having abandoned his or her work. So I suggest that in your bar examination you use the term gross and habitual neglect of duty as a ground to terminate. Abandonment is just an expression of this. So when can we consider that the employee has committed an act that is tantamount to gross and habitual neglect of duty? So for instance, when the employee has gone a wool or abandoned the work, or the employee or the employer must prove that the employee's failure to report to work was without a valid or justifiable reason. And second, there must be the clear intent on the part of the employee to severe employer-employee relationship. Now, how will you prove this? Now, using substantial evidence, we have to rely on the notice. So the employer must send notice to the employee through registered mail or private courier or other method using social media or electronic mail. It must be proven that the employee has received the notice to explain why the employee abandoned the work and the first notice should contain not only an explanation but also return to work order. If there is no answer with the employee, then a second notice will come out and be sent to the employee informing the latter that his or her employment has been terminated. With this document, we can prove that there is already a clear intent on the part of the employee to severe employer-employee relationship. Another example of Severance, a clear intent on the part of the employee to severe employee employee relationship is finding another job. If the employee has been employed with another company, there is a clear intent that the employee is not anymore returning to work. So all the employer must do is to prove using substantial evidence. There is even a case of 
Heart Transport Corporation which is Ihandra, May 20, 2004 when the Supreme Court ruled that the employer in case of abandonment should have reported the abandonment, the act of abandonment to the nearest regional office of the Department of Labor and Employment. However, it is not, I think, very important that we notify. What is important is we can prove that there is this clear intent to severe employer-employer relationship. This kind of requirement only shows good faith on the part of the employee. But of course, it can be added in order to build up a case of the validity of termination. However, there is another exception when it comes to the requirement of the two elements of gross neglect and habitual neglect. If the employee has caused damage on the part of the employer, in the case of LBC versus Mateo, June 9, 2009, where the employee has been so grossly negligent despite the warning by the employee, the motorcycle used by the the company motorcycle used by the employee was stolen. So there was the termination of employee because of gross neglect. It, it happened only once. However, the Supreme Court considered it as a ground to terminate because the employee was grossly negligent and there was serious damage or prejudice on the part of the employee. employee. Now, there's one thing I would like to emphasize regarding the, in the prescriptive period in the illegal dismissal case in the case of abandonment. One thing that I would like to emphasize is the, the purpose of sending notice and to establish the clear intent of the employee to severe employer-employer relationship is the fact that the prescriptive period in filing illegal dismissal case is four years from the time the employee stopped working or was quote and unquote allegedly dismissed. If the employee failed to send notice or the employee cannot prove that the employee received the notice and the employee will return after one year and refuse to work and refuse to work with the employer, then the employee can file an illegal dismissal case because the four year period has not prescribed the case of Ascor Manufacturing Corporation versus NRC February 11, 1999. So, always remember that the prescriptive period must come into play in abandonment. So, if there is a difficult question in bar examination in gross and habitual neglect, would be abandonment and the application of the prescriptive period. So even if the employee will return after three years, the employer cannot refuse employment provided that the employer wasn't able to prove by substantial evidence that it sent notice to the employee, the notice to explain and the notice to terminate. So again, the wording of proof rule lies on the employer. So it is the job of the employer to establish by substantial evidence that the act of the employee is constitutive of gross neglect and it is habitually committed or repeated several times. So the case of LBC would be an exception to the rule that the two elements must go together. In the case of St. Luke's Medical Center versus Rodrigo, November 25, 2009, the Supreme Court ruled that gross inefficiency is closely related to gross neglect. 
because it both involves the specific acts or omission, the part of the employee resulting in damage to the employer on, or to his business. So therefore, it will justify dismissal. If the employee is grossly inefficient, there's also the element of habituality here. Because you cannot just say that the employee is grossly inefficient in just one occasion. So there must be justification as to repetition of the grossly negligent act of the employee.